Dude, and I noticed, what man, is this neighborhood just like a Jeep neighborhood? Yeah. Dude. Well, it's funny. We, we were the first ones, I'd like to say. All right, guys, we're going to be doing a water pump on a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Just going to put right here. Don't worry, guys. I know I'm parking in front of the mailbox, but here's the deal. It's well past 5 o'clock, so no mail is going to be running. But let's get it. Freaking everybody's got Jeeps around here. That's hey, what's up, buddy? How's it going? Matt, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you uh, in person. Yeah, in person. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then um, she's been having problems with her. It just, it kind of. I noticed that, man, when I started it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, I noticed that. I know you were going to say when I started it, it took me two turns to yeah. get it. Yeah. So, so I'm not sure what that one might be, but. Yeah, I'll, ta I'll take a look. I'll check into that for sure. All right, so because this isn't going to be such a long job, I'm just going to put up my umbrella. All right, so because as you can tell, we're on some pretty nice, pretty nice ground here, we're going to go ahead and take double precautions. The first thing we want to do is pop this hose off and then pull the shroud out, and then we'll have so much more access. So, okay, you can start to see that clear on it, clean metal. Here's our fan here all right here we go now we got the here's our water pump so basically what we got to do is just take the pulley off and then we can bust these bolts out looks like we have to get this idler out of the way let's see what's behind door number one all right so here is our water pump since this is a hard line it's going to come out with it and then i'll loosen it up this hose is extremely hot, so I know this coolant, if it touches my skin, it will burn. So, we gotta be careful. Oh, even these bolts are hot, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. At this point, we can go ahead and pull it on off. Make sure our drain pan is under there. So I did take this hose clamp off so we could just slide it out. Looking at all this stuff, these hoses are probably gonna have to be replaced here before too long. All right, so here's our old water pump. So guys, I'm not sure if I even mentioned to you why we're, why we're replacing this water pump. And the whole reason why is because this customer is experiencing um, overheating at idle. And it's not all the time, it's just, you know, every now and again on a really hot day. And so a while back I had diagnosed the fan clutch and the fan clutch was actually, um, it was engaging, but it was still pretty, it was really worn down, so. I had suggested to replace it and it's, it worked for a long while, didn't have any issues, but I'm um, here recently, you know, having some more uh, problems. So, all right, so with this completely clean, as you can see, I'm going to take some gasket sealer. I'm just going to go around it, just like that. Then we're going to do the same thing to the water pump. So here's our old water pump and I wanted to point something out. So do you see the back there? Do you see the difference? So this one's obviously going to be able to push a whole lot more water at a way bigger volume than this damn thing would. So, all right. So the only thing I'll have to transfer over is this little hard line and I would put some thread locker on that. So this just secures our gasket. It's going to get extremely hot in there and we don't want to have any future leaks. So. All right, here is our new gasket with our instructions on how to install it. So, looks like it's going to go on just like this. Mount them in there, see, just like that. So first we got this idler here, we got a... All right, then we got our pulley. Loop-de-loop -loop and pull. Now we got the shroud and the fan with the new clutch on it. All right, once you get it on there, you can just spin it. So last thing we got is just this reservoir. And then we're going to go ahead and top everything off and bleed the system. Make sure we don't have any leaks. And make sure we're not overheating. And call our day. All right, so I'm going to leave the radiator cap off. I'm going to go ahead and start it and make sure we're not leaking or nothing. Let it get to operating temperature and then see. All right, so 
I know it's hot outside, but the best way to do this, guys, is to actually turn on the heater. So that way, all the coolant can travel through the heater core, and then back through the radiator, and then through the engine, and then etc. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the heater, wait till we feel the heat, and then we'll know we're fully cycled through. It smells good in here. As you can see, it is drinking it some. I did fill it up and I let gravity do its work. All right, so as you can see, our bubble stopped and our pressure is just holding steady. So this is a good indicator that we can go ahead and cap it. It's gonna take a second for that thermostat to open, but I don't know if you guys uh, remember he had asked me to check that starter because slow starting. Here's the deal. The uh, cold cranking amps on a battery are important. They're the cranking amps for the vehicle. So if you have a weak battery, um, or a battery that's just suspect of being weak or old uh, Slow start would be so and I can tell on this battery. It's older than heck Anyway, let's see what we're vol our volts are So we've got 13 volts Holding steady at 13 um, Guys honestly a good alternator would push about 14 volts with the uh, engine running with the current running I'll go ahead and test the uh, battery with the engine off and see what the voltage is at there, but... So with the battery off, we're going to go ahead and test it. Let's see what our volts are. Well, we got 12 volts on the battery, so that's with the engine off, so that's good. I mean, it's almost at 13, so... Our battery seems to be good and our alternator seems to be good. I've also noticed that um, ground wires corroded or broken or dirty ground wires could cause slow startup issues. We can go ahead and uh, go ahead and check that starter, check the connections on the starter. I do believe it's just right under there. Do you see that wire? Let me get a little bit closer. You see it's just straight fresh wire to that connection. So. That could be a very, very good indicator. I'm gonna go ahead and suggest that we get this new connection. I can probably just pull one of those from the salvage yard. I'll look online and see if I can get one, but um, that's gonna be our starting point is that connection and then just cleaning off all this corroded wires and basically just having a good straight connection. It's been about 25 minutes and we are holding steady right below the half mark, which is honestly, guys, exactly where you want it to be. Um, a good temperature switch and a good water pump will allow it to not overheat and not really get in the middle but allow it to just like stay right below to where you feel comfortable but you're not really worried about it so at this point i'm confident um we have no leaks i can go ahead and tell the customer that the uh, job is well done all right man, so, man. all right so uh you're good then no overheating i got it there and it dropped back down um okay. So as far as slow startup, I went ahead and I checked your alternator. Your alternator is good. It's good. pushing uh, plenty enough power. Uh, your battery is good with the engine off. But I did go underneath. You'll see it in the video I create later. But I did go underneath and I noticed the connections to the starter um, are bare. Like there's just, there's no coating on them or nothing. It's just straight wire. Yeah. And then so that wire is just corroded with bullshit. So not having a good connection um really will cause a, start, a starter to slow start the only the real things that cause a starter to do that is either battery or alternator or the starter related it's not really or ground i've seen ground cables i think the best bet would to be um get that starter cleaned up those connections cleaned up and then get that new connector um i'll send you what i'm talking about but it's just a straight wire to your starter so that alone is dangerous anyways because if you like run something over and it shoves that wire up against the starter it's going to start grounding it out and then it'll melt that wire it'll pop some fuses awesome. dude and i noticed what man is this neighborhood just like a jeep neighborhood yeah dude well, it's funny we we were the first ones i'd like to say but then uh they moved in across the street that got a jeep they got a Jeep. <laughs> they got a Jeep, and the next door neighbors. Well, got they a Jeep. just had a line yeah. of them and come that, down. And then yeah. Right over there, it's like a Jeep club now. Yeah, man. So and I was like, yeah. I was like, she's for sure part and then of I something. I have a Jeep in the garage, so. Yeah. Holy <laughs> <Like, laughs> so, yeah. cow. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Oh, cool, man. Well, yeah, well, I appreciate right. it. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, my man. Take it easy. Have a good evening. It is a Jeep club. <laughs>